welcome to mlsmith.com. Today we're going to start our series on swaging rifle bullets. We're going to be using the Corbin CSP2 Megamite Press and the um, H series dies that go with it. I've already introduced you to the press, but let me change the camera angle and I'm going to show you what we're actually going to be doing. Basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a 22 rimfire case, whether it's a 22 short or 22 long rifle, not 22 Magnum, and we're going to put it through a, a special jacket making die which will unfold the rim and turn it into this, which will be our jacket. We're going to cut a piece of lead wire right here. We're going to swage it into a core. And eventually what we're going to do is we're going to seat it and point it into a bullet right here, which will give us our jacket hollow point. You can buy commercial jackets for this purpose, but for the what we're doing, we're going to be going through the process of converting an empty 22 case uh, to make a jacket a rifle bullet. Let me go ahead and show you the dies that go to the press from jacket making die all the way to the point forming die, and then I'll show you some of the tools I've had to make along the way. Okay, here we have the dies that we use to make a 224 inch jacket or rifle bullet out of rimfire brass. The first die we have here is the RF jacket maker and each die comes with a punch this is not a die here this is the punch holder for these guys right here now what you do with this is the rim fire jacket goes through this and it unfolds the rim and then you make your set of jackets the best thing to do if you're going to do that is take all your brass and sort them by brand otherwise you're going to have uh, jacket thickness variations and you don't want that the next die here is the swage die which takes the lead wire or the cast core which the term that is used in the industry is a core blank and we put it through this and it compresses it into the core and this hole here bleeds out any excess lead via pressure the second die here is the core seat die this takes the core and compresses it and expands it out into the jacket to seat it into the jacket itself, which makes it somewhat permanent. Then this die here is the point forming die. What I want to do is give you a demonstration or an idea of how big these dies are. I know it's kind of difficult to tell, but this is a standard rifle die for an RCBS press. It's your, it's your standard reloading die. These dies are pretty large. In fact, these dies are the same dies used in Corbin's um, hydraulic presses and the press that we're using is a manual press but it'll, it'll exert just about the same amount of pressure. So let me go ahead and do a close-up of each die and show you exactly what it does. Okay, the jacket forming die. It's called an RF die. You can see it on top of here. It's not a very big die. It's about the same size as your, as your standard reloading die but it's made out of this stuff called carboloy. It's diamond lapped it's extremely hard, but what it does is you take your rim fire case, and as you see on this one here, we still have the rim on here, and what it'll do is when it forces it through, it'll unfold the case and turn into a nice jacket. Sometimes it bursts through the other side of it, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, once you get the hang of it, uh, it does a great job, and you can produce a lot of jackets. Now, the nice thing about using this form of jacket is, is free. Otherwise you have to buy jackets from either Sierra, Nosler, Berger, or Corbin themselves. And what I'm trying to do is take as much overhead out of this as I possibly can. Now a rimfire jacket is thinner than a regular copper jacket. So you have to be careful. There are speed limits and we're testing those out now. And your speed limit on these things it really depends on your rifling twist. The faster the twist the slower the, the bullets are going to have to go. Otherwise, the centrifugal force of the bullet spinning, the, the gyroscopic effect, will make the bullet come apart in flight. So far, uh, from testing, in one of 14 inch twists, we can push them about 3,800. And we're pushing them about 32, 3,300 in the one in seven. And they're still holding together, but I think anything faster than that is going to make them fly apart. So, here's kind of how it works. You have to use a lubricant, and I use Corbin's lubricant. It's uh, anhydrous lanolin. And 
this goes, the jacket goes, or the, the rimfire case goes on here once it's lubed, and it gets pushed through the die and it comes out the top. It'll hold two or three of these in there until they start coming out the top. And when it comes out, what it does is it um, unfolds this rim. Now it's important to note that you have to anneal the brass and they have to be cleaned. The best way to clean them that I found is to boil them in water with a little bit of soap and a little bit of vinegar. And what it does is it gets all the the chemical residues out of the out of the case before you start running through the dye. Otherwise, you get this grit on there, it'll make it stick to this thing, and it's kind of a pain to get off. But there's a way around that, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. So that's the jacket forming dye right there. And they sell other types of jacket forming dyes as well. You don't have to use rimfire jackets and you don't have to use store bought jackets. They have an actual jacket making dye that uses um, copper or brass tubing. It's a little on the expensive side. I don't have one yet. Uh, at least I don't need one for the 22. Uh, I will need one when I get the 30 caliber dyes because I want to make my own jackets. So once we get that, we'll go into that. So let's move on to the next dye. The next die is the coarse wedge die. These dies are marked. And the die is actually a three piece setup. So, what we got is a core blank, which we cut. And then, when it's done, it makes these nice little cylinders, which is our actual core. So, here's how it works this goes into the bottom of the die, and this is your actual stop right here. This is your limiter right here. And it's, this is at a constant. And then on the die itself, as you can see, it's marked with an S and 190. The 190 is the actual diameter of the core, so it's going to come out at 0 .190 inches. And what happens is, this is in the, in the ram of the die here, like this. So when the ram goes, this is stationary, and when the ram goes up, this stops right where it needs to be for the bleed hole to squirt out any excess. Now the punch on the top, this is adjustable through the, um, the, the punch holder. And the punch holder fits into the top, top of the press. Each piece has, is numbered, the diameter and marked for what the die stands for. Here it says S, down here it says S.190. And the nice thing about it is if any of these, if this breaks for whatever reason, this can be take, taken out with a hex nut and this removed and replaced. It's not cheap to replace. You can snap these and you can split dies. Okay? Um, even though these things are really robust, you're limited to the Brunel hardness of the lead that you're using. Right now, this is only good for pure lead up to wheel weights. Anything harder than that, you're pushing the limits and you're going to overpressure the die and split it in two. Now, on these bleed holes, there's two of them. There's one on each side of the die. And when it squirts out the excess lead, it comes out looking like this. It's like a little piece of electrician solder. And I'll recycle those and melt them down so I can make cast cores again. So that's the core swage die. Now we have to go into the core seat die, which is the next step in this process.